The war in Ukraine has entered day 32, which means Russia's war machine is not slowing down. Russian forces continue to attack some of the top Ukrainian cities, including Kyiv, Mariupol and Donetsk. There are fresh explosions being reported from Ukraine's western city of Lviv. This as United States of America's President Joe Biden wrapped up his visit to neighboring Poland. More details in this report of how precisely is the world reacting and what is the ground status in Ukraine? Take a look. The war in Ukraine showing no signs of abating. Over a month and Moscow's war machine is not slowing down. This horrific drone image captures a massive explosion in the capital city, Kyiv. The Russian Defense Ministry shared this image of an airstrike on a Ukrainian Buck missile system performed by an Iskander missile. The devastating strike taking out the missile system. In a massive explosion with deadly ferocity. An industrial unit was hit in the region bordering the capital city and Irpin with multiple Russian missile attacks raining. The mayor of the capital city announced a curfew from 8 p.m. local time on Saturday till early Monday. Residents allowed to leave their homes only to get to a nearby bomb shelter. There were, however, reports which said that the curfew was later revoked. The southern port city of Mariupol suffered relentless shelling since Russia began its operation in Ukraine. Multiple attacks continue to be witnessed in the heart of the city. Residents are taking shelter in basement as they try to stay alive amid the destruction around them. Fresh explosions were reported near Ukraine's western city of Lviv as President Joe Biden wrapped up his visit to neighboring Poland. But Ukraine's military and the brave residents continue to fight back every single day. These images are from Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv, where residents covered the monument of Shevchenko with sandbags to protect it from Russian airstrikes. On the last 24 hours, Kyiv has largely remained quiet. There was no airstrike or missile strike on the Kyiv city proper. However, 15 kilometers away from Kyiv towards Irpin, an industrial complex was destroyed by a missile strike yesterday morning. Situation around Kyiv also remains largely quiet. Not much military activity in the areas of Bucha, Irpin or Gastomel or even in Bromri. However, Russian army continues to improve their defensive posture in these areas, rotating their troops, beefing up their supplies, stocking up in these areas. With Rajesh Pawar, Bureau Report, India Today. As war enters the 32nd day for Ukraine, the country is now fighting a two-front war. What does that mean? One, with the Russian invasion forces. The other, Russian-backed rebels in Donetsk, who call themselves Donetsk People's Republic. This is a separatist region in Ukraine which is pitted against the Ukrainian rule. Here's an exclusive report by India Today's Foreign Affairs editor Geeta Mohan from Donetsk. Take a look. Ukraine is fighting a two-front war, one with Russian invasion forces and the other with Russian-backed rebels of Donetsk, who call themselves the Donetsk People's Republic, a separatist region which is pitted against the Ukraine rule.
as Ukrainians battle it out against Russian aggression, images from southeastern Ukraine tell a different story. India today visited this rebel stronghold of Donetsk to find strong support for Russian President Vladimir Putin and his invasion. In Donetsk, most cars were seen with pro-Russia Z signs. The anti-Ukrainian sign is a call for independence from Ukraine. Z denotes independence. Russia and the breakaway factions of Donbas region, Donetsk, uh, what they call Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, uh, are together fighting the Ukrainians. And the two signs that they use are signs that Ukraine also recognizes distinctly as being anti-Ukraine, which is V for victory and Z for independence. In Donetsk, you will not see a lot of V signs, you'll see Z. Why? Because the call is for independence. So a lot of cars over here that you see have to their sign only saying that they do not want to remain with Ukraine, they want independence. Russian supporters in downtown Donetsk were also seen paying homage to the lives lost in the Tochka U missile attack carried out by the Ukrainians on 14th March. More than 20 people were allegedly killed in the attack which left marks of shelling on residential buildings. This is the building that got hit and I'll show you, this is where it landed. Uh, 20 people were killed. That's the memory, that's, that's the memory of the people whose lives were lost. And the entire building over here, you can see the marks of shelling. If you see, there are marks of shelling everywhere in the building. Lately, it's noted that uh, the, the attacks are even more frequent than before. I talked with some military personnel and uh, it, it's totally speculative what I'm going to say. But one possible explanation is that Ukrainian troops, which are stationed in Donetsk, or near Donetsk right now, it's possibly more than 50,000 of them. So they, it's a huge troop and possibly they are sending the sort of a message the Moscow-backed separatists have ruled the Donbas region for eight years now. Russia is now using them as tools to gain upper hand in the invasion war. Will there be a ceasefire? Will there be an end to war? Can there be negotiations where both sides' demands are met and kept? We'll be reporting on that. With which journalist Satya Rautre in Dunas, Kitamur, Prince. Welcome back. Pakistan's political tamasha is at its peak. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan showed his strength at a mega rally in Islamabad. Senior party leaders standing shoulder to shoulder with Pakistan's Wazir Azam as he plays his political career's most crucial inning. Imran Khan lashed out at the opposition over the issue of corruption and said he can sacrifice government and life but will not forget criminals. He also, interestingly, took an indirect jibe at former Prime Ministers like Nawaz Sharif, General Parvez Musharraf and said, three rats are looting the country from past 30 years. But what really became an obstacle for him is earlier in the day, Jamuri Watan Party Chief Shah Zayn Bukti, a key ally of the Imran Khan government, parted ways with the PTI. Now, the Imran Khan ally bolted after... Opposition, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Zilawal, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari reached out to him. Voting on no-confidence motion is likely to take place on 4th of April.